Hello, it's Robin here again. <laughs> Every week, twice a week. Um, as always, we're gonna wait just a little bit, get let people get joined in. Um, give it a couple minutes, I guess. How y'all doing? Keep going. Yep. Mm -hmm. Anyone on the Okay, I'm gonna put some. Well, hello, everybody. I am just learning, looking up how to start or how to count to ten in French, and then we'll get started. We've got three. All right. Let me do this real fast. Actually, you know what? I'll do this while y'all are running. So, awesome! Lots of people are joining in. Perfect. So, I am looking up how to count to ten in French, like I said I was going to last week, I think. So. I'm gonna look that up real fast. And while I'm doing that, I want y'all to get started on running. You can run in place, you can run around in circles, any kind of running that you wanna do, try to get your feet going really fast. Y'all should be done running now. That was plenty of time. So now let's take it into um, skips. So again, you can skip in place, try to get up really high, or you can go around in circles, or you can go back and forth, whatever space that you have. Um, however you wanna do it, but get those things up high, big skips. Now let's take it into some uh, rabbit kicks, as someone called them a couple weeks ago. Bring your feet up behind you, try to kick your bottom. Keep doing those, a couple more seconds. Let's do a couple seconds of jumping jacks, open and close. We're doing some jumping jacks. And stop. Very good. Alrighty. Hopefully you're kind of warmed up by now. If not, um, keep on running, jumping, whatever you need to do to get your muscles warmed up. And let's take it into our stretches. First things first, arms swing side to side. I feel like it's a lot quieter in here without the fans. It's weird. I forgot to count. I don't even remember how many. Feels like 10. All right, now switch you up and down. One, two. Circles one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Circle on the forwards three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now take your arm, go straight across the chest, grab the wrist, and pull your straight arm towards you. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Six, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. And switch sides. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Excellent. Arms up over your head, touch your back, grab that elbow or your hands, and pull your arm behind your head as far as you can. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Switch sides, touch your back, or arms up, touch your back, grab and pull. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good. Feet together, legs nice and straight, arms up tall. You're gonna reach down, try to touch your toes. I can almost make it today. Look at that. <laughs> One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good job, and drop it to the floor into your butterfly. Put your knees to the ground and nose to toes. Good, and go ahead and take your feet. You're not gonna put them all the way straight. You're just gonna scoot them out a little bit so your legs are still kind of in a diamond shape, but not like as close as they were to you before. And you're gonna reach down again. Oh my goodness, this stretch is very different muscles and this hurts. Not like a bad hurt, just I'm sore hurt. <laughs> And now straighten the legs all the way, point those toes really hard, squeeze them tight, one, two, three, four, and five, and then point your toes to the ceiling and squeeze super tight, one, two, three, four, and five. Good, go ahead and roll your ankles around in circles, both of them going the same direction, and circle them the other way. Excellent, now just flex and point and flex and point and flex and point one more time. Last one, hold, squeeze super tight. And did I read it back? I don't think so. Okay, feet are together and you're gonna reach forwards all the way to your toes. Head down towards your knees. And open to a big straddle, arms up tall, you're going to reach over, touch um, over your head so your arm should be hiding your ear, you should feel the stretch in your side, reaching, holding, this feels really good, and squeezing, <laughs> and other side, touch and reach, ooh this side feels even better. <sighs> It's nice to get up and move. Glad y'all are joining in to do it too. All right, and you're gonna reach forward as far as you can. And turn, excellent. Now, um, stand it up just a little bit. We're gonna slide into your shadow split, so put your hands right in front of you. Try to keep your feet going in a straight line and slide down as far as you can. I like that I have this line here, but you can always go up against the wall or something to make sure you're going straight if you don't have a line. All right, up on your knees. You're gonna go into your lunge. Put your legs straight out in front. As always, you wanna make sure your knee isn't gonna pass your toes in your lunge. You want to make sure it's a nice healthy lunge, and by that I just mean with the knees. And then your hip, and push forwards. And then pull your legs straight, So up towards the side. You're going to look down at your knee, and hands down by your foot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now, you're not going to go straight into your split. We're going to do something a little different this time. So, you're going to go back to that lunge, and as best as you can, I want you to try to pull your back foot 
up and um, hold on to it or you can try to pull it close to your body. I can't really do it as well as I used to, but you want to keep your hips pushed forwards when you're doing this. And you definitely want to make sure your foot is going, trying to stay straight. You don't want to be like grabbing with this opposite foot and ending up like this. You want to stay as straight as you can. So um, if you are next to the wall and it's really helpful to hold on to the wall for your balance, it's hard to balance in this one. All right, gonna put it down and now we side into your split. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Back up on your knees. We're gonna do the same thing on the other leg. Push it nice and straight, and on your thigh, and bend into your lunge. Pushing those hips down as far as you can. Remember, if you're up like this, you're not getting the stretch in your hip that you need. And straighten your front leg, toe up towards the ceiling, reach it down. Oh my goodness, this leg is really sore. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And back to your lunge. We're gonna pick up that back foot. Wish I had a wall. It's hard to balance. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And go ahead and slide it to your splits. Three, four, five, six, seven. Alrighty, sit up on your knees. We're gonna go ahead and do um, your wrists. So point your hands up towards the sky and we're just gonna kind of rock back and forth. My wrist is still hurting from whenever I hurt it. I think like last week, I don't know. Flip them over, go faster, kind of shake them out. <laughs> and I roll them in circles. Good, and go ahead and point them up down to the floor, push them down into the ground. Oh my goodness, I did not think my workout got me this slow yesterday. I wasn't feeling it till I'm stretching right now. <laughs> Alright, flip them over and push them down. Alrighty. Um, now we're going to do the ankle one. I think I introduced this last week. You're going to push up to your downward dog and just kind of push your heels down one at a time. You're going to hold for five seconds each. Two, three, four, five, switch. Two, three, four, five, switch. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Now go ahead and try to push both of them down at the same time. As you can see, I can't really get as far down as I could with just one. Um, if you're not really feeling the stretch here, you can bend your knees. That kind of gives it more of an angle. Um, okay. um, there's always something else I wanted to do. Yeah, let's see. Um, oh, yeah. There's this new thing I wanted to try. Well, not try. I've done it before. I think it's a really nice stretch. So you're going to go into your big straddle like before, kind of acting like you're going to go into your splits. But, um, so you want your feet turned out away from you and your feet more than shoulder width apart. So mine are like, how, how far would you say that is from my hips? Like a foot? I mean, it's a pretty wide stance. Three feet from my hips? Oh, from your hips. <laughs> from each other maybe, but not from my hips, my goodness. Um, so your, hit, your feet are really wide apart and you're going to bend your knees and hold, hold your hands on your knees so that you're pushing them out and away from you. And it's okay if your chest drops a little bit, but not too far because the point of this one is to push your knees out and you're getting this stretch in kind of the nether regions. <laughs> this is really good to help with your straddle splits. 
we can kind of rock back and forth. I'm sure you've all seen this one where you go like this. This feels really, really good if you want to do that too. All right, and then we're gonna do your bridge. So as always, if you can do your back bend, go for it. If not, just lay down on the floor, push up into your bridge. I'm not gonna do it today because So um, go ahead and go down into your bridge. Um, you're gonna count to, let's do five, just holding it. So you're down in your bridge, five, four, three, two, one. Don't come down, put your feet together, get your legs nice and straight. Five, four, three, two, one. Now you can take a break or you can lift one leg, hold it up, one, two, three, four, five. Again, you're still in your bridge or resting if you need to, lift the other foot, one, two, three, four, and five. Come on down, hug your knees, let's do um, three rock and rolls. One, two, three, and stand it up. And that is it for warm up. Congratulations, you made it through part one. Three more to go. <laughs> All right, we're gonna head over to floor after I grab my water bottle. People. <sighs> Alrighty, today for floor, we are going to start nice and easy with some bunny hops. Now I don't want these to be regular, plain old boring bunny hops. I want these to be super nice and tight, arms squeezed to your ears. I don't want to see any of the raise the roof party arms, okay? Keep your arms squeezed nice and tight, your legs nice and tight. It helps me to kind of pretend like I'm on a beam, so my feet are one in front of the other instead of side by side. It's really up to you though, it's a personal preference. Um, this just makes it easier for me personally to stay tight. So I'm going to tuck my shirt in because I just know it'll fly up. So arms are up nice and tight, and I want these super tiny hops. You to notice that my knees are not bending. I'm barely traveling. Okay. My arms are not moving. My fingers are not moving. I hope everything is super tight. Okay. Go for as um, far distance that you have. I've got this whole entire gym. Obviously, I'm not going to use the whole entire gym. So, whatever space that you have, you're going to go all the way down. And then when you get to the end of wherever you're working, you're going to keep facing that direction and jump backwards. See, I knew that was going to happen. Same thing backwards. In my opinion, this is easier. Just a little harder to take tiny hops. So yeah, you're going all the way down, all the way back backwards in whatever space you have. If you don't have a very, bleh, very big space, then do it a couple times just to get that workout in your calves. It's harder than it seems. All right. I'm gonna give you about a minute to do those. That might be too long, but I wanna make sure that you're getting the workout in and it's really burning in your calves. And I don't mean burning in a bad way, of course, just when your muscles get fatigued, that's that burning sensation. We're going for that today. So if you don't have very much space and you'd rather do these in place, you can definitely do that too. Again, if you're doing it side by side, in my opinion, that makes it a little harder, but that's just me. Some people think it's easier, personal opinion. All right, next thing that we're gonna do is your run, hurdle, freeze. Now hopefully, as intermediate level students, you know what a run is, you know what a hurdle is, and you know how to freeze. Hopefully you've done these all together before, but if not, now's your chance. So literally, first thing, first step, you can stay there because I'm moving. So first thing you're gonna do is run. I just want you to take like two steps and just kind of stop mid-step, okay? So, like I said, just like one, two, however many.
many you want to do. You're just freezing. Notice I'm still using my arms as I would if I were actually preparing for a round off. And then we're going to add the hurdle. So I'll show you what that is. But first, so I, going into a round off or a cartwheel, you always want to hurdle on your bad foot so that you're able to step out with your good foot into your skill. So for me, that's my left. So as I'm running, I'm going to think about when I am ready to hurdle, making sure my left is the one I do it on. So you step and it's pretty much a big skip, just like that. So you're running, then you take your step, your arms come up in your ears as your leg comes up and there's your hurdle. But we're not going to stop there. You're going to, I want you to go into your step for your freeze. So it's everything I just showed you run, hurdle, freeze. It's like pausing a video of a round off right before you go into it. So notice that my body was kind of leaning forward onto my good foot, my right foot. It's as if I'm actually going to do the round off, but you're not. This is all about the control, being able to stop yourself where you're trying to stop. For the sake of room, I'm just going to do one step. You can do two or three, however many you feel most comfortable. But even when I tumble, I only take like two steps, so. Ah! See, lack of control. That's what we're trying to avoid. I'm gonna pretend like I did that on purpose. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Okay. Do three more of those. I hurt my toe. For those of you who don't know, my toenail fell off over the summer and it's still healing a little bit. Next, we're gonna go over your power hurdle. We're gonna touch base on this again on vault. Um, but I just wanna remind you real fast, I think I did go over this a couple weeks ago in the lesson, so if you were there for it, great. If not, no big deal, I'm about to say it again. So with the power hurdle, it's kinda like the regular hurdle, except you take out the run and you start with your feet together. That's where all your power and momentum comes from instead of the run. So just like in the regular hurdle, as you get ready for your round off, your arms swing up. The difference is that it happens a lot sooner. I'm going to scoot back so the camera can see me. And so you start feet together and you're going to land in that same step out freeze position. But again, it's just starting with your feet together. So you jump. See, so the only difference is the beginning part. Other than that, it's that same step freeze. We do about four of those. And then we'll move on. Um, yeah, do about a couple of those. All right, should be finishing up with those. Five people, awesome, hello, hello. Um, if you missed the instruction, you're practicing power hurdle step freeze. And we're gonna move it on into levers. So um, what you're gonna do for this one is pretty much go, you're going through a T position, but then you're gonna keep going all the way to the floor as if you were doing a handstand but without the push into the handstand. So it's like a fake handstand. So you're gonna go on your good foot, balance here, drop your hands down to the floor, pick your leg up as high as it can, and you're gonna push it back up to this um, standing lunge. Um, in my head, my foot is all the way over my head. I doubt that that's actually where it is, but if you're flexible enough for that, you definitely want to be trying to get your foot up as high as you can. It should look like a straight line from your hands to your toe. Like I said, I really doubt that's what I'm doing. I'm going to watch myself in the mirror, though. Oh, wow, it's not bad. It's not as far as it feels like in my head, but it's not bad. Okay. Um, so we're just doing that. You're leaning down, up, and back to lunge. If you want to add a small little hop, you can. So kind of what 
side this is, you're going to your D, you're just doing small hop to your fake handstand and coming back up. All right, next, what I want you to do, um, we're not spending too terribly much time on this um, because ideally I want to be there to see how you're doing it, make sure you're doing it correctly because that's really hard to explain and look for virtually. But um, just to kind of help with the turning of the round off, because a lot of times the issue I see is that kids don't, they're not turning their hips, their body in the way that they need to. So to kind of help with that, what you're gonna do is go to that same T position, and you're gonna drop your good arm down to kind of look at your foot, and then just kind of do that over and over. That's it. And then once you feel like you're getting a sufficient turn in your hand, so if y'all don't know the T thing, remember that your one hand goes straight, your bad hand looks at that hand. So you're ending up in this position as you go to your round off. So I want you to do that. So you're gonna go T position, drop, and you can either cartwheel or round off with that turn and hand. Camera person, if you wanna focus on my hands real fast for this. Not me, my hands. My hands are gonna be down there. Okay, so you go down, it turns and turns, and you have your wheel. Okay? Okay. Um, I have a couple more things, but I think we'll skip those. Um, so we're going to go over to bars. Go ahead and get some water if you need it. I don't know. I kind of want to keep... We're going to do my last two things. Um, that's not a big deal. We can do it over here, though. Okay, so... <laughs> that was funny. Okay. Next, the last two things. One is a hollow hold, one is an arch hold, and the other is a handstand hold with a leg lift. So, should have stayed over there, but it's fine. Alright, so for your hollow hold, we all know what this is. Hopefully, you're balancing on your booty, arms, are here, legs are up, you're just like nothing touching except your bottom. If you can, which I hope that you can, I cannot, but if you can, I want you to try to do these with your arms up. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to immediately fall, but I'm going to try to show you anyway. So it's there, there, right there, right there, right there, right there, without the rocking. Like I said, I cannot do it. I am not strong enough. So if you weren't either, you can do what I was just doing. Just kind of rock up and down. That's totally fine too. Um, but if you can hold it, hold it for about 20 seconds or simply just as long as you can. This is, in my opinion, really, really hard. So don't worry too much if you can't do it. Just do the rocks if you can't. And then along kind of the same thing, you're gonna do an arch. It's the exact opposite position. Instead of balancing on your bottom, you're balancing on your stomach. Again, your arms are up in your ears. If that's really hard for you to lift up, you can bring your arms down. They're kind of by your chest, but ideally they're gonna be up and you're lifting up as high as you can, just like that. And you can do it as a hold or a lift, like I was just doing. You're gonna do, if you're doing a hold, just hold it as long as you can. If you're doing the lift, do as many as you can. Try to shoot for about 20-ish. Um, I'm gonna give y'all a couple minutes to do those. Um, try to, if you're doing the hold, like I said, just as long as you can, or a minimum of 20 seconds. And yeah. Um, can I give you a little time to do that?
sorry. Alrighty, that should be enough time for that. And the very last thing that you're gonna do is the handstand hold. So um, I was gonna do this with the little blocky thing, but I'm just gonna do it right here. So you can put your feet up on your couch or your bed if it's high or low enough, I guess. Some people's beds are like bunk beds, so it's way too high. Um, so you put your feet up on the couch and you're gonna go down into your handstand hold. Ideally, your hips are all the way over your head. Kind of hard for me to do that on this low surface. Okay, here's my idea. There's this thing right here. I'll use this. All right, so you put your feet up. Hips are up over your head. And you're gonna lift one foot all the way up as high as it'll go. Try to hold it. You're trying to let the weight on your foot so that you're holding it on your hands more. Put it down, switch legs. Same idea, you're trying to put the weight on your hands. Yep. Whew. I like how this is really red now. All right, um, now we're gonna move it over to the bars. Like I said, we're gonna do, um, so with bars, it is hard for, it's hard when you don't have the bar at home. So if you do have one at home, you can do your front support on the bar, obviously. Hands go like that. You're balancing on the balls of your hands, pushing up. And since y'all are intermediates, I want what I want you to do is push or push down on the bar and lift your hips up. Uh, yeah, I, that's the best way I can think to describe it. So you're just lifting your hips up as high as you can. I like to have kind of a goal set for myself. So normally in gymnastics, y'all wear shorts or like one of the long unitards or something. So you can try to push all the way there. You can try to get all the way to your knee, whatever goal you want to set for yourself. And you're going to do 10, just lifting and going back down. If you can hold it, that'd be even better. Like I said, with the hollow holds, I'm not that strong. It's kind of hard for me to hold it. Um, but if you can, please do. You're going to do 10 of those. I'm gonna give you like a, I don't know, like a minute. I feel like a minute feels like a long time, but it's really not. So if you're not done by the time the minute's up, that's okay. If you're done before the minute's up, that's fine too. Yeah, 50 seconds. next one so if you missed that I'll show you one more time just in case anyone joined in or missed it so you're just lifting and going back down trying to hold it if you can all right so for the next thing um, if you have a floor bar at home again I'm super jealous I wish I did when I was little but if not, you can just put like pretty much anything down on the ground to use as your makeshift bar for this one. If you have maybe a small step in your house, I don't mean like a full stair step, I mean like a small step. Well, actually, I guess a big step is fine. Whatever you have, um, make use of it. I'm just gonna use this thing. Okay, so um, what we're gonna do is kind of a push-up hold that's gonna mimic our front support. So obviously you can't do a front support on the floor, but you're gonna kind of pretend you are by going like this. And we're gonna work on your cast by trying to lift your feet. So you can do it one foot at a time, just working those muscles. Or if you're super strong, you can try oh, that's hard. both feet at the same time. The trick with that one is to make sure you're not going like this. You don't want your hips way up in the air because that's not what it looks like on the bar. When you're on the bar, you're in this nice hollow position. So you're trying to keep that nice hollow position, pulling your feet up as if in a cast. But again, if 
that, if you can't quite do that, you can just lift one foot at a time. Try to make sure your hips are staying down. I know I have a habit of curling up like this and I'm not as flat as I feel like I am. So make sure your hips are staying down, nice and hollow, even as you kick. Alright, I want you to do five of those if you're doing feet together, a total of five if you're doing one foot at a time, five on each side. So a total of ten, I guess, for those. For the next one, you're going to do, you can go back to your couch or wherever you were doing the other handstand thing, but we're not going to do a handstand. For this one, you are going to do the same kind of kick that you did on there. This is going to be really hard on this mat. <laughs> you're still in that hollow, and you're trying to bring your feet up, just like that. Again, mimicking the casting position. This time I want you to do 10 of those. 10. I guess I can keep going just in case you need to see it more. Cameraman, can you tell me if my hips are coming up too much? So I'll give you about 20 more seconds to do the other five. I'm do it one time. Ooh, nice. <laughs> I forget I'm on camera sometimes. Okay. Next one that we're going to do is your candlestick hold. So we have done this before in warm up. It's kind of like the rock and roll that you did, except you're going to hold it. So we're going to start with your arms up. And again, this is working on the cast by, in, by building the um, core muscles, but it's also helping with handstands, um, back hip circles, chin pullovers, like literally anything that uses core muscles. Um, also kips if you're getting close to those. So um, you can start standing up if you want to or sitting down. It's the same either way. You're going to lean to your back. Oh, my ponytail is going to make this hard. Okay, so you're going to lean to your back. Your arms stay up in your ears or you can challenge yourself. Try to balance with them down at your hips as if you're holding on to the bar. Um, doing it up here makes it easier to balance because it gives you that support. So, and then you're going to lift your legs and your hips up off the ground. It's really hard for me to do this step, so I'm going to roll into it. Apparently, I can't hold these anymore. Let me put it down here. There. I definitely cannot talk while in that position. I am not built for this anymore. So... As you're holding that position, like I said, your toes are pointed straight towards the ceiling. Your arms are either up by your ears or um, down at your hips, pretending like you're holding onto a bar. If you do have a bar at home and it's small enough to hold, then you can bring it with you as you do these. And I'll show you how to do that with this red thing here in a second. Once I put my hair back up. I do. Hold it now that I think about it, it's going to get in my way again. <laughs> what I'm going to do is do it off of this thing so that my hair is not in my way. Okay, so, I'm going to start here to go back, just like that, and you can hold it, or just roll. Totally up to you. Okay. I feel like I had a minute timer going for something, and it just went off. So whatever I was giving you a minute to do and forgot about, sorry about that. Maybe I started it on accident. <laughs> that happens sometimes. Right here. <laughs> Too far. Let's try that again. I promise I 
that used to be better. Um, before we go into vault. We're gonna practice your tuck on. So if you can go back to that raised surface that you had, um, or if you had one. If not, you can do it on a flat floor too. It's just a little bit harder. Um, so you're gonna go back into that plank position and what you're gonna do is bring your feet up underneath you and curl your hips under so you're standing in a tuck position. Of course, on a bar, you would pretend like you're still holding on. That's why I left my hands on the ground. And you're just gonna kind of hop back and forth in that. So you're here, leave your hands on the floor, you're still holding on. Notice your hips have to come under you. Your chest has to come up a little bit, otherwise you're just gonna fall on your face. Like this. I see it a lot. Okay, so you're here. Hips too much. Hips go down, chest comes up. And if you want to practice the stand up, you can. You're just kind of pretending like you're reaching for that high bar. Do about 10 of those. I think my iPad dies. Oh no. Oh, I didn't. Cool. Okay. All right. So that's it for um, bars. We're going to take it over to vault. Of course, our vault is right next to bars, so I don't have to go anywhere. Take a second to get some water. Almost there, guys. Alright. First thing we're going to do is going back into the run hurdle that you did over there. The only difference, or over on the floor, the only difference is instead of stepping out into your round off or cartwheel, now you're doing the vault hurdle, in which the only difference is the landing. You land feet together instead of the step out. But other than that, it's the same. So, I'm gonna pretend like that white line right there is my springboard. So I'm gonna run my big skip and I land that hurdle in a punch position as if I was gonna go to vault. Just do that a couple times. You can run however far you want. It doesn't have to be much. It can be a one single step if you want. It's totally up to you, whatever space you have. I'm gonna do like two steps because that's what I have. I meant to, okay, so going into that, if you haven't noticed or if you haven't been taught this already, remember when you hit the springboard, that's these things, if you forgot already, when you hit the springboard, you want your arms to be up, ready to catch you in whatever skill you're doing. If you've been following Simone Biles, you best bet her arms are up as soon as she hits that springboard because she goes flying over it, right? She does that like a round off or a back handspring or a front handspring or something over the table. But no matter what it is, your hands always touch it. And to have the hands touch it as you're going upside down, they need to be there ready to catch you. For us, we pretty much do dive rolls and flat backs or maybe front handsprings. But even the same rule applies. You have to have your arms up ready to catch you. You can't do a handstand with your arms down here. I don't care what anybody tells you. You can't do it, okay? Your arms are up as soon as you hit the board. So that's what we're practicing down here. So as you hurdle, it's that same thing as with the, um, with the cartwheel on the floor. So you go up and there, I'm ready. If you want an extra challenge, you can add an arm circle, which is common on vault because it gives you some extra power. So pretty much with that, it's just bringing them down and back up. So it goes down around the back and then pushes up as you hit the springboard. So to kind of show you that, it's like this. It's hard for me to do with the free, so you don't have to be there if, you, if it's weird for you to. Um, I'll try though. There we go. So as you can see, it starts as I take off the floor and finishes as I hit the springboard. So I'll show you that on an actual springboard. So cameraman, if you want to like follow me that way. Okay, so you're going to go like that. And where that comes in handy. 
handy with the bigger skills is it gives you an automatic block in your shoulders. So that's why we learned that. So, okay, that's your arm circle, practicing that punch. Um, if you want to practice that a little slower, you can always take it one step at a time instead of for the run. Just kind of stand on your bad foot. And as you jump, you practice that arm circle. So they go just like that. So you're, you're only focusing on the arms. Makes it a little easier. Okay. We're going to skip that for now just in case we don't have time. All right. So next thing I want to do is I want you to practice your jumps. Your stretch, tuck, shuttle, half, full. Yeah, that's it. Stretch, tuck, shuttle, half, and full turns. So you can do this either stationary, just standing in one place, practicing stretch jump, tuck jump, straddle jump, half turn, full turn. Um, or you can do it with the run. So going back to pretending you're on vault. I mean, I'm super lucky I have this nice spring four under me. If I was doing it down there, I would not be doing so good. But so like I said, you're just practicing that same hurdle punch or hurt tuck. Or straddle. I'm not gonna do the arm circle for this one because that's weird. Same as you would on vault. Um, with the half turn, it's a little harder because you have to try to put a turn in with your jump. Now, I already know this is not going to turn out good, but obviously a stretch half is just a half turn, so skip that. Try it with a tuck. So it's the same half turn combined with that same tuck jump, but it's together. So go in. even more of an extra challenge you can try with a straddle jump um i really don't think i can do this with the run let's see i bet i can it's not that hard it's easier standing though um yeah and then like super 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 extra challenge is a full turn now a half full just a full turn with a half with a tuck jump. But a straddle full, that's where it gets you. <sighs> oh, that was terrible. <laughs> oh. <sighs> I'm very tired. That's hard. Okay. And that is all I have for vault. It's actually not, but we eh, I can do it a little more. Okay. <sighs> Very, very last thing for vault that I want to do today is practicing your dive rolls. Now, for this one, I only want you to do it if you have a soft surface under you, something squishy or just like very shock absorbent and soft because this is definitely not something you want to do on a hard floor. It's like a forward roll with more power. We're kind of doing a standing dive roll. So, Sorry, excuse me. So it's kind of the same as a regular front roll, except you're trying to make it as long as possible by reaching out before you go and jumping into it. So I'm gonna say, I've got, I'm gonna finish past that blue line. Okay, now granted I've done these a thousand times before so I can do this, but your goal should be twice your length. So like however tall you are, twice that. So, Arms start up as I reach down. My arms are staying up. My chest is down because I'm looking at where I'm going to go. And I jump. And like I said, way past that line. Super off balance. So, there we go. So, yeah. If you don't have that soft surface, you can always just try to do kind of a walkout like this. So, you're in a pipe. 
and then dump it over into your roll. All right, and that is all I have for vault. And as always for your free time in the last five minutes of class, I'm gonna give you another game to play. So for this one, in honor of Easter, I'm calling it the Easter egg hunt. However, if you've been with me for Parents' Night Out, I call it pained. So um, pretty much what you do is you have your players standing in a straight line and whoever the it caller person is standing out in front. And whoever the it person, caller, whatever you want to call it is, um, they're going to call out something in this version, something to find. In my version that I play here, I just call out a body part and a color, and they run and touch that body part to the color. So, for example, if I were to say pinky to yellow, I would go find a yellow thing, touch my pinky to it, come back to the line, and yell a ping. But, again, for the Easter's version, you can do that where they go and find something, touch it, and come back, or they can go find it and bring it back, you can yell out Easter Bunny or something other than ping, make it a little more fun. You can do the body parts or um, some kind of challenge. You can say like, uh, go find um, a hair tie and do three jumping jacks and come back or something like that. If you want to keep it simple, just um, you know, go find a hair tie, touch it with your nose and come back or bring it back, like I said. However you want to do it, lots of different ways to change this one up. It's one of my favorite games to play at Parents Night Out because it's so easy to um, change for the demographic. Um, yeah, so super fun with this one. I love this game. Going over all these games and stuff makes me miss y'all even more. Can, like, can this just be over so we can come back to class already? I miss y'all, my goodness. Okay. Um, that's all I have for you. If you have any questions about the game, I feel like I went through it really fast. Um, I'll stay on for like a minute more if you have any questions about that or you can leave it in the comments and I'll try to reply later. Um, hope you enjoyed this week's class. See you on Thursday. It doesn't look like there's going to be any questions, so go ahead and end it.